Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem from the 2015 IMO shortlist, problem number A1. And this is actually the original problem number five. So there's a story behind this problem that I'll mention at the end of this video. But if you want to try this problem out, I invite you to try it out for a minimum of actually 20 to 30 minutes at a minimum, ideally 19 minutes to two and a half hours not more than four and a half hours because you wouldn't have that much time at the IMO anyway. So now without further ado, let's begin. We have the sequence of positive real numbers that satisfies this relationship. And for every positive integer k, must prove that the sum of these numbers is greater than or equal to n. So the first idea is, okay, let me see what this is, right? Let's explore. This is an IMO problem. We need to, you know, play around a bit, explore around with the problem. So we have, for k is equal to 1, we have a2 is greater than or equal to a1 over a1 squared, which is equal to 1 over a1. And then we have, okay, a2 plus a1 is going to be equal to is going to be greater than or equal to 1 over a1 plus a1, which is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so 2 seems simple enough. Now, what about a3? a3 is greater than or equal to 2 times a2 over a2 squared plus 1. What do we do with this? It is not looking very nice. And... This also isn't necessarily greater, this actually is not, this is less than or equal to one. So we can't really use the fact that we can't apply just blatant induction here. It doesn't work. So we need to do something smarter because just induction as, is, as it is right now isn't very good. Maybe there's another form of induction we can try to apply. Maybe we can show this is greater than or equal to like two minus some function of a two or some two minus some function of a one. I mean, like this is greater than like two minus a two minus one over a one, right? Actually, this thing right here actually is it. So this is going to be a one plus a2 greater than or equal to 2 minus a1. But this doesn't actually, this isn't what we actually need. Hmm. Maybe there's a function we can have there. So the difficulty seems in this problem is how are we going to use this condition? So like, what is it that we have? We have, when we plug this into what we need to prove, we need to prove a1 plus a2 plus 2a2 over a2 squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to 3. Just the question is how? How are we? What is this meant to give us? Like how are we proving anything with this? How do I get a2 squared plus 1? Or maybe a, a2 greater than or equal to 1 over a1. I use that fact over here. Maybe let's see what happens if I have plus a2 plus, well, 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 it, if a2 is greater than or equal to this, we don't really know how this behaves, right? When is this smallest? And that's a function of the form. So actually, let's see when this is smallest. I think we can actually do that. So this is 2a2 over a2 squared plus 1, so this is, we're looking at a function x over x squared plus 1. And this behaves like this is, so we can have plus x cubed minus x cubed. And then this is 1 over x squared plus 1 minus x cubed over x squared plus 1. I'm having a hard time. Maybe pause for five minutes and see like how this went, what is the minimum of this? And the answer is, the answer is 
we don't have a minimum here. This, the minimum of this is when as x grows large, this doesn't have a minimum. So we're in a little bit of a pickle here. How are we ever going to approach this problem? We can't use induction. Maybe there's a, another thing that we can prove instead of proving this directly. Maybe there's some function of these others that we can use. Also, this condition is it's worth taking. I am not sure how we can actually just like use this condition now. Maybe that's, let's see what happens when you use the condition. Like here's where you're, this is a difficult problem because it's a one idea problem, one or two idea problem. And those are hard to motivate, but they do come up sometimes at the IMO. And it's important for you to now try to see what can you do here? How can you motivate this? The only sort of thing I can say that doesn't give up any too much, any too big of a hint is that sometimes like when you want to prove this is greater than a constant, saying so that's a function of these variables, sometimes inductively you can only prove that this is greater than or equal to some constant plus some function of the other variables or function of maybe one variable, one other variable. So now that's where I would leave you. And what we'll do now is pause and try to work with the problem. So when we divide what we did there, when we had trouble estimating and figure out how to estimate the function, we realized, wait, I just divided everything by a K and this looks somewhat nicer than what we had before. And maybe there's some estimate now we can have with respect to if we have AK plus one, we can estimate these others now maybe as K over AK plus one minus K minus one over AK. And now can we do anything here when you rewrite the function like this? So that's the idea that we're not going to estimate it directly, but rather somewhat indirectly. And the cool thing is now that if we have say AK minus one, is greater than or equal to k minus one over a k minus one, actually a k, k minus one time over a k, minus k minus two over a k minus one. And then if we sum them all up, still a two is greater than or equal to, what will we have? We'll have k minus one, we'll have one over a one minus zero minus actually what will we have a two is greater than or equal to two over a one minus one over actually we'll have yeah a two is greater than or equal to two over a three minus one over a two and now when we add these, and we also have, oh yeah, that's what we have for A2. And then for A1, we have, I just realized that like, we switched up AK plus one and AK. And now we have for A1 is that this is greater than or equal to one over A2. And now when we sum all of these up in here, we will have that this cancels out with this. This cancels out with the next one, and this cancels out with this one. Like all of these start canceling each other out. And now what we're left with is a1 plus a2 plus a k is greater than or equal to k times a k plus one. And we have this for that sum. And now I invite you to pause for, for the next 10 to 15 minutes and see if you can push the problem further. And the thing is, here's where the problem really is finished. Because what do we need to prove? We need to prove that what a n all the way till a n is greater than or equal to n. So say we proved something this for k, say this is greater than or equal to k, that we know that. 
And now for a k plus 1, when we add it, we'll have a1 plus a2 plus a k plus a k plus 1. And then this is greater to k over a k plus 1 plus a k plus 1. And this is a function of the form x plus k over x. Right, that's this function now. f of x is x plus k over x. And now the thing about this function is that there is an interval on which it is increasing. And I invite you to pause. Also, keep in mind this. If k plus a k plus 1, if a k plus 1 is equal to 1, is greater than or equal to 1, we're done. Right, problem's finished. However, if it's not greater than or equal to 1, then what do we have? We have this thing right here. It, x is less than or equal to 1. And when does this reach its maximum then on the interval from 0 to 1? Actually, 0 not included. What is the maximum of this function? And I invite you here to pause for another 5 minutes and try to figure that out. And the answer here is how can we estimate this? I think that like when you plug values in, like if you plug in a half, you'll get 2k plus a half. 2k plus a half is bigger than k plus is bigger than k plus one. Right? For any k that's bigger than or equal to one. And now you're trying to see, okay, like I'm seeing that for one, I have that this is what I need it to be. How will I ever estimate this? And your problem is that x here can be small. And that this is decreasing, this is increasing as x goes from 1 to 0. So you can here use your good old friend AMGM. When we have equality, you have equality when the two things you add are going to be equal to one another. So what do you do there? Well, you want to have x. And what is x going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be not k over x, but I'll need to say instead of k of these, I'll need to take one of them, right? I need to take 1 over x to have equality. But then you realize, wait, if I take 1 over x from here, okay, I can take that, and then I'm left with k minus 1x. And then I know this is greater than or equal to 2 plus k minus 1x. And given x is less than or equal to 1, this means this is greater than or equal to 2 plus k minus 1, which is equal to k plus 1. And that just finishes up the problem. Now, this is a problem where you just, the condition needs to be rewritten and reused in some way. And the only hint, the only idea I could have given you is that sometimes in problems, when you can't apply induction directly, you must go some indirect way that you can apply it, right? Maybe, maybe there is a way to motivate this by doing free, but I could motivate with that. In fact, I just, I knew I had to play with these because I remember this was on a, a training test for the IMO for me. And this finishes up the problem. Now, the interesting part, why was this the original P, P5? And what I believe is that the same person that made the, the second problem at the IMO 2015 made this problem. So they were a bit mad that this problem wasn't, that they, that they didn't have both number two and number five. But the thing that happened was after the first day of the IMO, you had uh, leaders. So leaders at the IMO make the exam. The deputy leaders are there with the contestants. And while we have our exam on day one, the deputy leaders, they go on a trip, right? On an excursion that we will go to later after the exams are finished. And while the leaders and the deputy leaders are sort of trying to get us the points that we need for the IMO. And the thing is, at the excursion, they gave the deputy leaders who interact with the contestants, instead of giving them the papers of the IMO papers for day one, they accidentally printed out and gave them the IMO papers for day two. So then the deputy leader saw and he was like, wait, this, this says day, this says day two. Today is day one, to which the uh, Thai host had a little panic, then informed the IMO advisory board, the 
leaders that these actually leaders have seen the test of day two and because they have to go to the hotel and interact with the con contestants who have just had day one and so to ensure that there is no cheating that none of these problems get out right to the contestants they had to have a meeting and they scrapped the three problems that they chose for day two and had to choose different three problems for day two and that is why say they wanted to choose g1 uh, a1 and i think a a beautiful c that was a c6 or c7 and instead they chose a g2 which was more difficult than the g1 and a that was of a different flavor a functional equation that actually came up and a c that was supposedly easier that was i think a c4 but that was not at all as beautiful as that other C that was meant to be the problem number six at the IMO. However, irregardless of that fact, the person with the most gold medals at the time who get, got it into the Hall of Fame got 42 out of 42 at the IMO. Maybe he would not have gotten 42 out of 42 if problem six was a lot more a bit more difficult actually a bit a lot more difficult and that's this problem that's the story behind why this problem wasn't at the IMO and in my opinion this is much harder than a2 because it's a one idea problem you either have it you either get this idea or you don't you can sort of motivate it with I can't apply induction directly maybe I can sometimes do an induction on something different something maybe weaker or better and to sort of motivate how am I going to do this induction, I need to see, okay, what does this actually look like? What is this condition? And then you see, wait a second, I can rewrite it like this. Now this gives me AK instead of AK plus one on this side. And then you notice, oh wait, this is going to be telescoping, right? These are going to count, cancel out. And then you see, okay, now I can have an estimate for A1 through AK with the next term and you see oh wait a second i'm done that's pretty much this problem that's the extent to the motivation i can give for this problem and this finishes it up though i must say i had a different i tried this problem for an hour two hours actually no i was trying out this problem for about three and a half hours and i couldn't i couldn't get it at the time so this finishes it up, and as always, thanks for problem solving.